Are we live? It says live. And we are live. Oh, Happy live. Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> okay, everyone that's watching, this is a brand new show. And Tony and I are going to be um, coming to you every Friday with Wine Down Fridays. So, Tony, tell us about our idea. When did this, when did we actually get this first idea? Was it in? The art retreat? Well, I think it might have been, yeah. We, You and I went to an art retreat at the end of August. Uh, and at that point, I was adamant that I wanted nothing to do with Facebook Live. You did. That's true. I, I was. I was. And and by the first night, you had me involved. And by the third night, you had me involved with no makeup and in my pajamas. So I, I figured <laughs> that this was something we could do. And we had such a great time. Yeah. And, and, of course, the work that we do is so similar and so complicit in so many ways so uh and we both love wine yeah so we said okay let's let's do wine down and we'll talk about right business innovation we're going to talk about customer in customer service innovation we're going to talk about business marketing customer experience yes. we're going to we're going to put this together and kind of bring you the the tidbits of news and things um from the week uh, but you know prior yeah, and, and I, I think I think what's cool about doing this on Friday is I don't know about you, but before I leave the office every Friday, uh, I want to sit down and think about two or three things that really impacted me on the week because we're so busy and there's so much really. stuff going on that it's great to just think, okay, what are one or two things that happened this week that impacted me that made me think, and that those are the golden nuggets of the week. So I think that's uh, another reason why it's great to be doing this show on Friday afternoon. Yeah, I love it. So we're going to dive right in. And our goal is to bring you 30 minutes every Friday to do this. So thank you for those of you tuning in. Shout out to you. Throw out your comments and questions because we'd love to hear them. Um, and we'll pop them up on the screen here, you know, to, to give you a shout out as well. But Tony, we want to dive in with one that both grossed us out and intrigued us that you brought to your group which we'll talk about the groups um, at the end as well. But talk about your first um, wind down article. Well, I'm always on the lookout for what I consider to be innovative experiences. And sometimes a lot of those end up being marketing experiences. And this particular one, and I believe it was a member of the group who actually sent it to me, although I'm not, not sure I remember who, was a recent IKEA ad where, get this, and I'm going to show yeah. it. I'm going to yes, actually sure. bring it up. Yeah. Because this is so crazy. Anyway, the idea was, and Ikea does a lot of really provocative marketing. Is it up, Gina? Because I can't. It is. Yes. We have it. the ad up here. Okay. So um, Ikea does a lot of really provocative advertising, and they're great at being very innovative. And this particular one was a picture of a crib, if you can see the ad, yep. with a $995 price tag. And the thing was that if you could prove that you were pregnant, you could get the ad for four, the crib for $495. And the way to prove that you were pregnant was to pee on the ad. <laughs> so crazy. So here's the thing. The thing is that there was a whole bunch of conversation in the group about is this too provocative? Is it too gross? There was a lot of joking about it. And ooh, yuck, what are you going to do if you're the guy or the gal at Ikea when somebody brings in the ad? Now, there was a video on the page with the ad that did show the whole pee thing, but it had it in a little dropper. If you go to the link, you can see it. Just Google Ikea wants you to pee on this ad. And it had a little dropper, and you put the the thing, and, and then the new price appeared. It was the action of putting the P on the ad that made the new price appear. So here's the thing, and here's what I'd love us to, to chat about is, was this an absolutely too crazy idea? Did Ikea go too far? Would you ever pee on an ad? And here's the thing. <laughs> so many people I've talked to have said, if I was pregnant and I could save $500, I would definitely pee on the ad. So I'd love to hear exactly. from everybody, and, and I have some thoughts, but if there's anybody out there who wants to share a thought before <laughs> I go on. <laughs> because I was one of those people saying, I would pee on a piece of paper to save $500. Absolutely, for $500. 
And then, you know, people were saying, well, that's not very strategic. There won't be a lot of people who uh, who take them up on the offer because it's too gross. Well, strategic depends on what their objective was. Good point. And their objective at a $500 discount may not have been to get a bunch of people to come on and get come in and get the crib. It may have been to get people talking and that is exactly what this ad did. Oh, absolutely. It got right. everybody talking and sharing the ad and saying, can you believe it? Yes. Um, which is interesting because my daughter is pregnant and we were talking about absolutely she would bring that in. Uh, the only people, like we said, the only person I would feel bad for is the person who worked at Ikea that I have to like handle. Hopefully people would bring it in a Ziploc bag, but whoever really would go through with it. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. And, and and anybody who knows me knows I have kind of these five S's uh, for something to be truly innovative and for you to get a return on investment. So the first one is surprising. This was definitely surprising. Definitely this surprising. Was off the chart surprising. Yeah. Uh, the second one was strategic. And again, strategic depends on what you're trying to accomplish. So I don't know whether they were trying to drive sales or get people talking or both, but I think that they may well have hit their mark. The yep. third one was seductive. And this is where maybe there was a little issue. So people like you, and I think there was somebody else in the group that said, I think it was Pat Katz who said they should have added a little plastic bag for people. Exactly. To that that would be smart. Right. And, and for my for my money, where they fell on seductive was that that little video didn't call out the elephant in the room. If that little video had had said, you might be wondering how you're going to pee on this ad or you might think this is if, if it had called out the elephant in the room, I think it might have been more seductive. And the right. other two were sustainable and simple. And, and I don't know how simple it is to pee on an ad. But for five, yeah, that, that's true. I don't know how how easy that is for for pregnant women to do, but probably easier than the little sticks that people are doing for pregnancy tests. So I, you know, and it's, it is interesting because you see some ads that do something so crazy, so surprising um, to use the five S's that it does get people talking. And I think it's one of those things that makes for brilliant marketing and, and it's definitely measurable. So I look at it and go, is it measurable? Sure. They could see number one, who actually went through with it. But then right, like right. you were saying, does it get people sharing it? You would be able to start tracking how much traffic you got to the digital space. How many searches did people do with your name? Was there a hashtag? So there's definitely ways you could measure the success of that campaign as well. Absolutely. And Ikea does this so much. And, and I know you and I talk about this a lot. It's not enough just to be surprising. You have to be surprising and it also has to be measurable. And that's all part of being strategic. Right. Um, how many impressions you get and, ha and how, my, how many people are talking about it. And in this day and age, that's as important as everything else. Because the bottom line is if the people don't care, they won't share. Right. And this got well, shared. It is. It is tweetable. <laughs> if they don't care, they won't share. They won't share. My new Newmanism, and I love it. I love because, that one. Because, because share in today, you know, we used to talk about impressions being how many people saw your ad or your whatever. Today's right. impressions are how many people share and how many, you know, impressions they get by sharing. So it's all exponential. And I'm curious, for those of you listening, um, have you seen recently an ad campaign or something a business has done that really was like that shocked you, that surprised you? Um, it was interesting this morning. I did a Facebook live with David Scott, which I think Dave, Dave is in the chat here. And we talked about, he, he was talking about changing your ad from colored image to black and white yes. to kind of, it, it stops the eye yeah. traffic. And yeah. we talked about one um, company and I don't know who it was, but they put their ad upside down, the image upside down. So even something simple like that could surprise someone enough to stop and at least pay attention or share your campaign. But I'm curious if anyone, and, and all you have to do is write yes. You don't, If you can't remember it, just write yes. You've recently seen one. Or if you know of who it was, we'd love to hear because we want to we wanna, um, look up more um, <coughs> ideas on this because I think yeah. it's really, I think we have to think more. And we were talking about we have to get more creative to, and, and it takes, it, it's harder. It takes more time. 
But and, and I think there are a couple of really interesting things in what in what you just said. First of all, I love so three. I love the, the phrase eye traffic. I just I just think that's great because that's we live in a scanner's world yeah, and we're just how do you stop the eye traffic. Right. Uh, I think the second thing is there it, it's really about looking to the unexpected and asking yourself at every moment, what do my readers, followers, my market, whatever, expect in this particular moment? Well, now we are inundated with color images. They're all over. They're all over. So that's what people expect. And so right. if you do something different, then that gets their attention. Yeah. Yeah. Whether or not it's sustainable. So, for example, doing it in black and white would be sustainable and that could be part of your brand. So every time they're scanning and they see something in black and white, they associate it with your brand until somebody else catches on. Right. Upside right. down, I'm going to suggest you can only do that once because after a while it becomes a pain in the batuka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going right? <laughs> right. That's not so strategic or sustainable. I remember reading a book, I think by Tom Peters called Reimagine. This was years ago. And he had so many different fonts and so many different things in the book. I eventually had to put it down because it was a, it was just too difficult to read so it's all about balancing that and and the last comment i would make about being surprising and shocking is is i would love to hear from people on what's too far when do you go too far because i'm old enough to remember benetton and i maybe there are not a lot of people old enough to, but the campaigns that were so shocking at the beginning with the, the photos of the different races and the, then there was the ads campaign and all of these really shocking images and right. then they did one it went too far. I don't even remember what it was, but it was too shocking and too provocative. And it was the beginning of the end of the store. So it, it you know, it, it, there, there is a point and I would love to hear from people. Yeah. What's too far? What's How do you too far? Too far when you're being surprising and provocative. That is interesting. Well, let's see what Jill actually said. I'm going to, I don't know why I don't just keep my glasses on, but I feel like the glare is always getting in my way. Um, Oh, Chantel says she remembers those um, ads. Jill yeah. said, I used to own Leprechaun or Leprechaun portable restrooms in Chicago. Leprechaun. Okay, I'm loving it. I started a campaign. I had people take a picture in front of them. I had friends, family, strangers, celebrities, and political figures all doing it. Thousands of pictures in my archives. Wow. That's an awesome. And it is funny because people love taking pictures of themselves. So if you can get them to participate with your brand um, by taking pictures, yeah, really great, um, so, really great strategy. So, so Jill, what? First of all, I think that's amazing. And if I'm looking up, it's because I was still looking at the com comments. So, number one, name of your company. Hugely Love innovative, Love hugely it. creative, really, really attention getting. And the whole idea of pictures in front of your product, uh, we do that with our mini ladders and with the big red ladder. We get people to take pictures in front. So, uh, Jill. I would love to connect with you because I would like to put you in one of my blogs and or my book coming up because I think that's brilliant. So I don't know, Gina, you know how this is all yeah. beyond me, this technology. But Jill, I'd love to uh, <laughs> I'd love to connect. However, we do that we'll um, connect you in yeah. this world. And that's I mean, that is interesting because if you can get a creative name, Leprechaun, that's awesome. Well, um, we got junk or you got junk. is Yeah. Like, Right, you got to, yeah. So hey, here's here's Ruby in the house. Hey, Ruby. Ruby says interesting selfie moment for the fan experience. Yeah, yeah. It, it highlights the fan and makes them part of the experience, which is brilliant. Yeah, brilliant on I'm all not, accounts. I'm not sure how many people take selfies of themselves in front of portable toilets. In front of I'm, not saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> but I feel I think you got a whole new, which is not so new for you thing going here. We love you, Ruby. We yes. love you, Ruby. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jer, Jer is fond of saying that in this, in this world, we're, we're all about sight bites instead of sound yeah. bite. Which we I do love that. Bites. We want it's sight, sight bites. Bite. It's like, what will catch someone's attention? I mean, I'm always looking at, do you have a face that stops traffic? And, <laughs> you know, when I, when I, when I say that, I mean, like our profile pictures, when you see content flooding our social media streams, even our our profile pics, is it recognizable yeah. enough that people know who it is and, oh, I want to read their content? Or is it just a blur along with everyone else's? So your images, same thing. Whenever you're sharing images, 
do they capture the attention? I mean, if you're on any social platform, it doesn't matter which one these days, they're all so visual. So I think um, we do have to get more creative. Which, which is a really good point too, Gina, and, and in my work with you or in the work you do with us, I, I, I totally appreciated this whole conversation about images is people say, I don't want to pay for images. So I'm looking for all the places I can get images free. And I get that. I totally get that. But everybody else is looking for all of those images that they can get free too. And at some point, because I've seen it happen, the image that you love shows up in two, three, four other blogs, right. and all of a sudden they're not unique. So sometimes it's worth to pay for that little that little edge. Did I just or, see Ruby pop up? Or it's worth bringing your camera out more and getting those pictures yourselves as well, getting that unless content. You're, unless you're a horrible photographer like me, in which case. Well, then you just have to get better. Yeah, um, <laughs> I have chair. I have chair. Yeah, then you have to find somebody that can do it. Um, and Ruby did pop up again. She said, I just told my client in Tampa they need to place, uh, they need to find a place to pose for selfies in their venue. Yeah, to me, it's like if you have a brick and mortar business, there are so many ways, even if it's just, I love in San Diego, um, uh, recently I was at a hotel and they had this giant frame outside and it was facing the marina but they knew everyone wanted to take a picture by the marina so they just put this big frame and it's on a post outside and it had the name of the hotel and of course everyone wants to go take a selfie in the frame now so you know why not find now not everybody has a brick and mortar business to do that why not that pat snow came up with that why not why not so good is that here, here's another variation of that same idea for those of us, because I know a lot of us are in the speaking consulting industry. Uh, so I travel with my bright red ladder and we did an event for Home Depot once. And what we did, Home Depot had a foundation. So at the end of the event, we said to everybody, take a selfie. We'll take a picture of you on the ladder. And for everyone who posts it on Instagram and tags us, we would give two dollars to the foundation. So we ended up probably giving about five hundred dollars to the foundation. But it was a total other spin on that where we were able to say, OK, you get a selfie with the ladder, which everybody wanted. We're going to post those on Instagram and we're going to do some good with all of this. So uh, so that was another another uh, twist on that. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. Again, people love taking selfies anyway. So why not give them a fun way to do it? Um, <coughs> I have to say there's a brand and I'm, I was wanting to find the packaging because we usually have a frozen pizza in our freezer of this brand because in your group you asked the other day about packaging and there's a pizza company. I don't know if everybody has seen it yet, but it's called Screaming Sicilian is the brand and Screaming Sicilian Pizza, their box is so unique because it has a giant open mouth on the box that you that you can then see the pizza through the open mouth and then on the back you can punch out a little mustache because there's a mustache on it and you punch out the mustache and of course everybody takes a if you look at hashtag screaming Sicilian everyone has and I Kirk and I did this two years ago because on New Year's Eve that's how we spent our, our New Year's Eve we were watching um, TV and taking selfies as we ate frozen pizza I think we we're doing work for a client where we were Maybe it wasn't New Year's Eve. Maybe it was a Super Bowl, but it was something that we shouldn't have been doing. Have another glass of wine. Yeah, have another glass of wine. When was it? I don't remember. Um, but it, but Screaming Sicilian is another one that everybody wanted to do a selfie with the product. So it was a cool way to incorporate that. So, so um, here would be the challenge to everybody listening. The challenge to everybody listening would be, what do you have in your brand? What do you have in your customer experience that you could take this idea and run with it in some way where people could take a selfie with something or about something or just th this idea, what I call the flashpoint is the idea behind the idea. The idea behind the idea is that you integrate this whole selfie craze with something that represents your brand and then make it really easy for people to share. Yeah, and it's interesting because even Jill said people were even stating as they're posting the selfies, I don't even know why I'm doing this. Yes. <laughs> you know? But they wanted to do it. They want to be on they want to be on social media. They want to be famous. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of funny. So yeah, real really great way. Um, you know, find ways to incorporate unique messaging and ideas into your marketing, into your brand, 
and it's harder for some brands. We know that. We know yeah. for some brands, but, it's, but, but it's, it's doable. doable. It's, doable. it's doable. I mean, yes. you're, you're doing it with the ladder in the market. So yeah. Now, speaking of messaging, Gina, you and I were having a conversation earlier about this whole uh, trend, which I would call a change towards uh, transparency and authenticity. And uh, is that really paying off? And I, I think uh, I think the people listening would find that really interesting. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting because I started writing up a whole post about being naked and unafraid, <laughs> naked and unafraid. And just the whole concept of right now, companies looking for ways to be more transparent. And it started with um, started in my mind with the, the CVS pharmacy coming out saying that they were at, when um, I think they have up until 2020 uh, brands have up until 2020, but they will not carry any brand. And this has been in the news all over um, that photoshops their images. And I right away, I was like, what? Like, how is that possible? Because they yeah. carry, they carry cosmetics, they carry hair color, they carry, how will they possibly carry only products that don't have photoshopped images on them. I mean, what are they going to tell Maybelline? What are they going to tell L'Oreal? I I was so surprised by that news as of as was everyone else because it was a big news topic. But then I also was looking at um you know in in the clothing industry there's Airy that yeah. came out with that line of clothing Absolutely. um part of American Eagle and saying um we're going to only use you know, real models that aren't photoshopped. They're not, we're not going to photoshop their thighs to be super skinny. We're not going to photoshop the, you know, bulges away. We're going to show real women in these clothes and their sales have improved because of that. Um, the other one that recently McDonald's on McDonald's website, they were showing their food products with and without. So side by side comparisons of this is the McDonald's food before we, enhanced it and this is what we're doing to enhance it now i was looking at going there's such minor little tweaks to increase the shine or plump up the bun or the little wrinkles in the buns they were taking out um but i thought it was a really interesting trend that we're seeing that are there ways that all of us could be could use transparency that would make, I mean, are, are fans really looking for that? Does that make a difference to us? Are we more willing to go eat at McDonald's if they, if we're looking at that food differently? Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know about the McDonald's one. I'm going to, I'm going to let that one pass for now. Yeah. Um, what I do know is that one of the best ways to build a brand is to take a stand and, and it differentiates you from your competition. It has to be right. authentic. It yep. totally has to be authentic. And if you think back to CVS, I don't know how many years ago it was, got to be five, six, seven years ago now when they stopped selling cigarettes. Cigarettes, that's right. So they have a reputation for taking a stand. But but the thing is, it's a double-edged sword. Often when you take a stand, there's what I call a, a self-inflicted upheaval. In other words, you're prepared. You're being outrageously courageous. You're stepping out there. You're doing something that's going to differentiate you from your competition. And you, the self-inflicted upheaval is what you mentioned is that L'Oreal and those companies may say, well, we're, we we're, won't sell there. We, we won't sell there. I doubt that will happen because it yes, it's a huge distributor. But all I'm saying is it's a great way to grow your brand. And sometimes to stand out in the market, we need to put ourselves in this, in these situations where we have self-inflicted upheavals, where we are putting ourselves in a delicate situation and we know something may not go our way. In other words, we know we may lose customers, right? But it's worth it because the customers you lose are the ones that didn't agree with the stand you took. Right. Right. So it's a good way to kind of weed out, if you will, right. If you're looking at changing something in your business and taking that stand, and a lot of companies have done that recently with, you know, in different areas and different causes, but I think to do something very bold, um, and again, the other brands just trying to be more transparent and be bold, saying, all right, let's just show the real, you know, hamburger, or let's show the real model, or let's show what's happening behind the scenes. Does that cause people to have an affinity um, to that brand. And I, I, I think it does. It makes us feel, I think most people think in marketing and in, you know, somebody's trying to dupe me, somebody's trying to sell me something. So I think when a brand can stand for that, um, which, you know, C, CVS, I always call them CSV, CVS 
definitely is taking a bold stand. Um, brands like Dove, you know, they've been trying to really be right. the brand around authentic, mostly women. Um, so I think it's very on trend. I think it's very interesting. And all of us could, again, like you said, the challenge is how could we use authenticity and, uh, you know, Ruby, Ruby and Jared going back and forth joking, not that we have to be naked and unafraid. But we, could we, <laughs> we could be. We could be. It could help our brand. Yes. Uh, for uh, for and some I, of us, maybe, oh, yeah, it may not help my brand. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think the other <laughs> thing about this, though, which is always important, is that right, right now, now, all of all that, that ooh, where's the echo? All of that authenticity, authenticity and transparency is different. What will happen probably very quickly, it is no longer a trend, it is a change, meaning that's that right. that is what the market expects. expects right. And, and when the market starts to expect it, you need to be ahead of the curve. Right. You need to be able to say, okay, <laughs> I just seen Ruby said too visual. <laughs> hey, my friend, you, if you really want me to get too visual, it what? is Friday afternoon and I do have a glass, have a glass of wine. Of wine. So, it, could be, it could get scary. We're talking about getting naked and having wine in her hand. This could be, I did get her in her pajamas. Yes, um, and no makeup. Oh my <laughs> and my hair up the whole nine yards. And no preparation. No so makeup. for me, that was, you talk about taking a stand. That was yes. like self-occasions for me. <laughs> but but all of that to say that that uh, one, one of the things we always talk about is it's great to be different, strategically different, but, but by the time the unexpected becomes expected, it's already too late. Too late. So you're going to yeah. get there. What's the next thing that you need to get ahead of the curve on? That I love that. And, and you're so brilliant around helping people understand that of, you know, by the time we catch on to the trend, it's no longer a trend. It's, it's now you better already be doing it. And you're catching up. Uh, yeah. Yeah, catching up. So, you know, what what is that next thing and what do we really have to be doing different in our business? And I think we, you know, it's taking that time to really think through what, I mean, I'm always trying to think, uh, uh, you know, what's coming up? What's down the road? Where where are people, where are consumers wanting to be? Um, you know, and, and I'm always looking at it from more of a technology standpoint with augmented reality and virtual reality and, you know, AI and all these things. Where are customers going to expect us to be and who's going to do something really surprising first? And, and, and of course, thank goodness we have you taking care of all of this because <laughs> I think it just makes my eyes glaze over. But um, there was I forget what company I was talking to recently and they were talking about AI. And I, and I don't I don't remember what company it was, but it was a company in an industry that I was going, what, what, why are they thinking it? like I could not. But everybody is going to be. Yeah, Everybody's they will. going to be thinking about AI very, very quickly. Yeah. And, and, you know, it could be in simple ways like our, uh, you know, this morning we were talking about Dave and I were talking about AI in our um, customer experience. When somebody comes to your Facebook page, do you have a, a, a bot set up, a message bot set up that replies to people, gives them some information, lets them know you're going to get back to them. I mean, it could be simple things like that. It could be even, you know, our messaging on our emails. When somebody subscribes, do we have automated things that go out to let them know that we're that we're with them, you know? So it could yeah. be simple. It could be something more complex. But I, I do think we have to be always, you know, thinking and looking to, where is the consumer going? Sadly, most consumers are always, you know, they're, they're out there ahead of us looking for those solutions. And uh, like, Jared told me that yesterday that he read in the news that they have successfully cloned a monkey. They did. Which, for me, is a very good thing because I might be able to get one finally to travel with me. But, um, <laughs> you know, um, that, that, when you start, <laughs> I know there's a the ladder in one hand and the monkey on my shoulder. Yeah. And a, and a cloned monkey at that. A yeah, that is that, that is interesting. Yeah, but yeah. but it's all of this stuff that we're seeing is not that far away. And the question is, yeah. how do you integrate a cloned animal into your business? <laughs> that would be the question I would leave you with on a Friday afternoon. So we're going to leave you with peeing on ads, peeing on ads, naked, naked, and unafraid, and cloning monkeys. It's like, and, and that, that is our show in a nutshell. And taking selfies in front of unusual oh, places self, like and selfies in front of porta potties. Yeah. <laughs>
a live keychain. <laughs> I love a live keychain. I do love that. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. Jill says now I'm in a touchy field, which is collections. Hmm. Oh, there's got to be some way to go oh, down that is. path. <laughs> there's there's so many things that we could go down that path with. Jill, we'll have to brainstorm. Um, so it has been 30 minutes, folks. This has been way too much fun. Um, it was fun to wind down with you, Tony. Please. Absolutely. Cheers. And all of you who have joined us, thank you, Ruby and Jill and Jerry and Ev Chantel, everyone who has tuned in that sat on the sidelines and didn't say anything, we still love you. And we will see you next Friday. I'll be next in Arizona. Friday. So I might be poolside next week. Um, and we will wind down with next week's marketing and business goodies for you. Um, good, Ruby, thank you. We love you. Yes, you get a credit for this. You get a CEU for watching. <laughs> wind down somehow we're going to get that implemented you guys have a wonderful weekend and thank you for tuning in we'll see you Don't next friday get in touch jill okay yes. bye everybody Uggs, we'll see you next week <laughs>